Tory Island is a small island off the west coast of Donegal. It's Ireland's most remote inhabited island. There's less than 150 people living there. And for the last 65 years, a group of those islanders have been painting Tory and island life in a very unique way. The story begins when the English painter Derek Hill, who had recently moved to Donegal, met the lighthouse keeper on the train to Belfast. They struck up a conversation and Derek was fascinated by what he heard about Tory and the incredible beauty of the island. And he decided to go there and see if he could paint it. On his first visit to the island, he was painting one Sunday and after mass, a group of the islanders went down to have a look at his painting. And one of them, James Dixon, told Derek that he could do better himself if he tried. And I think Derek really enjoyed that challenge. So he asked Dixon to have a go at painting and offered to send him some paint and paper and paintbrushes. Now Dixon was happy to accept the paint and paper, but he wanted to make his own paintbrushes from donkey hair. And the first picture that he did for Derek was West End Village. And West End Village has become an iconic piece of 20th century art in Ireland. It's a picture of the larger of the two villages on Tory Island and you can see the, the sea, the pier, the rocky beach and the houses. Dixon did a really interesting thing with perspective and he mixed two different perspectives together. Most of every painting is like a map, so from the sky looking down. But when he came to something that was easier to paint face on, he did that. So the houses are painted as if they were lying on their backs looking up to the sky. This all goes to make his pictures very dramatic. There is a lot of romance in James Dixon's work. He saw the beauty in the world around him. He also saw the challenges of life on Tory and could paint the sea particularly well. There's nothing romantic about his depictions of the sea. It's a big, black, dangerous, life-taking, powerful thing. And it's something he shares with all of the Tory artists, this ability to paint the sea in a non-romantic way. If we compare it for a moment with Derek Hill's paintings from Tory Island, Derek looked for and found the beauty on Tory. He had moved to Donegal to paint landscapes, but he found his muse on Tory Island and his singularly most important body of work was produced there. He also found James Dixon and in many ways, Dixon and the other Tory Island artists are Derek Hill's great legacy. The Tory Island that Derek Hill found when he first visited in the 1950s is very different from the one that a visitor might find today. There was no accommodation for tourists, so Derek had to lodge with islanders on his first few visits. He soon rented a small hut from Irish Lights and used that as a studio and living accommodation for the next 40 years. James Dixon had a rare talent and Derek Hill recognised it straight away. And while not all his paintings were as stunning as West End Village, they were all unique and all fascinating in their own way. Dixon would work throughout the winter on his pictures and give them to Derek when he visited for painting trips during the summer. Derek would then bring them back and into the Irish and British art scene. He would show them to his friends and collectors, other artists and historians, and tell the story of James Dixon and Tory Island. It wasn't long until Derek was able to get a gallery in London, the Portal Gallery that specialised in folk and outsider art, to show Dixon's work. And over the course of the next few years, Dixon would paint, Derek would bring the pictures to London, they would sell, and Derek would return with the money to James Dixon. But before we go on to look at the other Tory Island artists, let's take a closer look at Tory Island itself. It's a small island, a long narrow island, about five kilometres by one kilometre. And we have this amazing painting by James Dixon that illustrates the island perfectly. So looking from the mainland, from left to right, the first thing you see is the lighthouse. The lighthouse features in a lot of the Tory Island paintings. Then we move across, you can see the fields and farm systems here, Derrick Hill's hut, and West End Village, the larger of the two villages. It's the one that we looked at in the painting earlier on. You can see the harbour and the houses, the graveyard. 
Looking at the second of these paintings, we can see East Town, which is a much smaller village with only a handful of cottages, and Tor Moor, the magnificent sea cliffs on the right-hand side of the island. It's easy to tell from this painting alone that there really aren't a lot of things on Tory Island to paint. And this is what's so fascinating about the Tory Island artists, that they have managed to make a body of work over 65 years by just repeating the same subjects over and over again. And in this time, they've created an incredibly unique record of island life. Derek painted on Tory every summer for almost 45 years. So I think it's safe to say that he knew the island better than any other trained artist did. He couldn't possibly have known it as well as the islanders though. Here's where the story starts to get a little bit more interesting. Spurred on by James Dixon's success, some of the other islanders began to paint people like his brother John and James Rogers. Like James Dixon, they were old men, so they only had time to produce a limited body of work, but they were joined very quickly by much younger islanders. And the three that stood out most were Patsy Dan Rogers, Rory Rogers and Anton Meenan. These three artists have really carried the torch of Tory Island folk art into the 21st century. I think it's important to separate James Dixon from the other Tory Island artists. James Dixon was known as a primitive artist and that term was probably okay in the 50s and 60s when James Dixon was painting, but even then it was a little bit outdated. Primitive artists shouldn't really know much about art. They shouldn't have books or have visited galleries or know other artists. They shouldn't know much about the art scene. And that was certainly very true of James Dixon. The other thing about primitive artists is that they tend not to have a wide experience of the world. They tend to be quite isolated in their communities and in their lifestyle. And that probably was true of James Dixon living on Tory up until his death in 1970. It's certainly not true of the other Tory Island artists, even his contemporaries, the old men like James Rogers and his brother John Dixon. John had been a commercial sailor and James Rogers had lived in America. So they knew, they knew what the world was and they knew about the world. The younger Tory artists and the ones that paint today are certainly every bit as sophisticated as the rest of us. And it bothers me when they're described as primitive artists. So I think the folk art term suits them much better. We've only looked at a few of the Tory Island painters in this video. There were many, many more. And together they've created a very unique record of life in a small island community. And I think unique in all the world. I can't think of anywhere else where a small community has painted itself over and over and over again in the course of 65 years. But it's more than that. 
they didn't use any artistic license, they just painted what was there. So it really is an accurate record of life on Tory, of the homes and the lifestyle, of the fishing and of the stories that they tell. In 1999, Derek Hill was made an honorary Irish citizen. It's a very rare honour. It was only given to a dozen or so people in the last hundred years. And the main reason that he was given that honour was because of his work with the Tory Island School of Folk Artists. The collection of Tory Island folk art in the Glebe House and Gallery comprises that early period from the mid 50s right up until 1980. It makes up the most complete collection of early Tory Island art.